In today's video, I'm going to be talking to one of our partners or one of my clients called Luke, who is in the last 60 days cut to over $60,000 in cash. And when he started out, he was making anywhere between 3K on the worst month or even 12K in his best month. So he's gone from that to now making $60,000 in cash in less than two months. So if you are an agency owner, online coach or consultant and you sell high ticket services online, you may want to see how Luke has been able to make the transformation. I sat down with him for about 20 minutes or so and I asked him a bunch of different questions and he gave some great feedback in not only working with us or to make clients, but how he has changed his mindset to, not, to now charging double what he used to whilst also making extremely much more revenue and what his plans are for the future. So I hope you enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next one. How long have we been, how long has your campaigns been launched for? Do we know? I want to say around about two months. Two months, yeah, that does sound about right, doesn't it? So obviously, there's a, there's a setup period, isn't there, where we build everything out together. I can take, you know, some people do it in seven days, some people takes longer. Depends on obviously what you're going on and you know how much we need to optimize. But can you, um, you know, briefly describe your experience working with us, obviously automate clients, and just summarize that for me, if you will. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, the interim period, I always was not wor too worried about with regards to the speed. I was, but I wasn't. I I'd far rather get things right. And start off from such an amazing platform rather than just trying to speed through th things so uh, everything went mm. really really well through that <clears throat> overall my uh, my experience has just been sen sensational like i've i may have mentioned before and i've mentioned to other people you know i've been on many masterminds and different sort of programs that are similar to this uh, and uh you know i've had m mixed results and experiences uh i've always taken a lot of good things away from it you know uh but with this with yourself and automated clients uh it's only just been continual sort of happy positive and successful experiences and they've compounded uh, and i think the biggest thing was the way that you do condense everything at the beginning there's a formulated system there's a plan it's like right we're going to build this out first once we have a vehicle then what we're going to do with that vehicle is we're going to then use that vehicle towards some form of success uh and, and that for me has been the sort of the biggest sort of um winning component uh and then just mixing the ability to be able to converse with you guys uh, you know these coaching calls that that you uh, involve involvement in Slack and everything else like that. So I think it's mm. it's been a combination of, of everything uh, that's really 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 helped me. That's awesome, man. I mean, I'm so I actually find it more I get way more satisfaction of a client getting results than I do like you know my team saying we just found a new client. There's something about it where it's just like it's almost like the you know when you give someone a present at Christmas versus receiving one. Absolutely. I don't know if it's everyone. I, I hope so because it's way more enjoyable this way. So you get way more satisfaction from giving rather than receiving right yeah absolutely. and it's like that is what really does fuel me to always try and make sure we're doing the most we can and we're providing the best support and the best setup we can for our clients because if i can take somebody from you know 10k a month to 40k 50k wherever they want to be a mom like being able to achieve that for someone else is just like uh it, it's it's a reward within itself outside of the money so i'm grateful for everything you just said as well you know i've already told you i'm very grateful but Oh yeah, yeah man, it means the world. And like I say, um, I mean, the, 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 gratitude, the gratitude goes both ways. Uh, you know, mm. and another thing you guys do do is you do go above and beyond, which is what I'm, I'm, you know, people would say, oh, well, I'm paying for service and stuff like that. But you should always be grateful for that regardless. But I'm, you know, I'm always mm. super grateful that you guys do go above and beyond. And I think that that's like a hallmark of not just a company, yeah. but good people, good leadership, good everything, really. good, good ethics and ethos. Yeah, to try and take everything. I try and take everything personally, even though people say not to in business, because if I do take it personally, then I have that extra like reason to, to make sure everything's going the right way. Um, and it, you know, it can be difficult because you get emotionally attached to decisions and emotionally attached to, attached to like outcomes. But if you don't have that kind of skin again, it's, it's hard to really help somebody, right? If you're just saying like, oh, you're just a number in my program. You're just a figure on my Stripe account. Like it, there's only so much you're going to do for that person. But you know, that's why I do the coaching calls. That's why I text you in you know, school, whatever platform, because I want you to know but this isn't just like a business for me in particular. It's like, this is like a lifestyle thing, right? Yeah, I'm not going to sell water to my clients. This is like my life. I, you know, if I'm not with my family, I'm, I'm doing this. So like, I want to make sure that, yeah, like you said, the ethics are there, the ethos is there, the integrity is there as well. But um, before joining all my clients, you know, what, what challenges were you facing? Because you said obviously you went through other masterminds or programs. So what was like the main like bottlenecks that you were experiencing before you, you spoke with us and our team? Yeah, I think the biggest bottleneck, like I presume a lot of people is obviously client acquisition. Uh, mm. You know, I was doing a lot of, the outreach myself and I think that was part of it as well I was obviously part of the bottleneck um, and I guess then there's different levels so I had already had a VA come in and work what is that other sort of things but then there's only a certain amount of 
quality work that they can do and, and everything else like that. And I think part of, again, looping back, you know, I didn't have a system that was automated, you know, mm. uh, and so every day I was having to come in and do your answer, all these other sort of things, the outbound, you know, I was using Drip to find a couple of other things, but even then it yeah. was not, the, the level of automation and the level of, you know, I, can, I know that that's, been, that's just happening in the background for me, uh, it was not even close to where it is now. Uh, mm. And, you know, and it's great because now things are starting to settle, then, you know, the next question is, right, okay, how can I scale this, you know? Yeah. And, and so but you need to be in those sort of specific positions and specific platforms or foundations first before you can do that. Uh, and so, yeah, my biggest hurdle was obviously client, quality client a- a- acquisition. Uh, yeah, and then reliable, just, right? Yeah, consistency and high volume are the two absolutely. key areas. Like if you have a lot of volume and it's consistent, so you're sending it every day and you're getting feedback every day, you know, the, I always say, as you know, it's like, it's all about your offer and your audience. If your audience wants what you're selling, then as long as you're consistent and have a high volume in the market, you're going to have people that are going to turn up, book appointments, and actually going to close people, right? Um, so yeah, it's like, it's, it's funny when you say it loud because it is what it is. Like it's, you know, if you were going to try acquire clients through uh, flyers, the more flyers you put on someone's car, like, you know, a thousand flyers versus 10,000 flyers, the 10,000 flyers are going to get more clients, right? Yeah, absolutely. But it doesn't, it tends to people like they're starting the journey, you know, 10, 20K a month, they kind of, I don't know what happens because the same thing happened to me is like you get happy and comfortable in like a certain area of like, oh, I'm just going to do this. Like, this is enough. This will take me over. But then you're always like hungry for more. And like, how can I actually scale this without having to send a manual loom video or like a manual DM? And it's it, the only way to do it is to automate it right through systems and, and processes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's funny how everyone goes through the same path. They get success manually working like as a freelancer kind of vibe. And then you either hire a VA, you hire a setter, you, you run ads or you use an automation, but it's how much of that are you running, right? And how much are you spending and, you know, what are your KPIs and how much are you willing to do to actually acquire clients and get to your goal? So it's always like, you know, for you, for example, if you're like, I want to go to 100K a month, 200K a month, it's all about then working out, you know, how much do you need to send, right? So you've got two profiles on LinkedIn, you've got three maybe, and then, okay, but if you had six profiles or if you were spending three times as much on ads or, you know, it can be as simple as just duplicating the volume and you'll get triple the amount of results. So it's always super interesting how it's perceived anyway. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I like what you said earlier as well with regards to, you know, honing the offer and everything else like that. Because I, I had a good offer anyway. Uh, mm. But I was underselling it. And my again, my mindset was, you know, was underselling it. And then it wasn't through, yeah. you know, through the experience of the onboarding and then doing all this, you know, all the stuff that you do in the background that I then started to re-look at it, re-ask questions, redo things, and then you were questioning, well, could it be more? Could you say so, and you know, testing things, uh that basically I mean the outcome where we are now is you know, my price point now has probably doubled and mm. the time frame's halved. Yeah. It's always the way man. Yeah, absolutely. It's and so part of that is also, you know, being in an environment where you get to ask those questions. Uh, and people ask you those questions, and you know you get a chance to ponder upon them and and, and test them, etc., etc. So that that that's yeah. a huge a huge component too. And it's all mindset. I remember I, I told you was it the, like an hour before the sales call? You're like, oh, how much should I charge? Because every, that you were getting no pushback from the price, right? It was like nine point five k, no pushback at all. So I said, hey, let's do twelve k and see what happens. And I could sense there was some anxiety there about like, is that a risk? Because if they say no, then I've lost that that, that client. But ultimately, it's not about the price, right? You know, it's not the, the price of milk is irrelevant in this case. It's, it's, it's about the transformation that they're paying for. You know, the, the type of client that you work with, it's a, a drop in the, in the ocean, right? It's like, you know, uh, if you can, I honestly believe you could triple your prices from where it was and even maybe more than that. Yeah. Because it's just the value that you provide is holistic. It's, you know, what is it? So you've got wealth, you've got health, and you know, the main two, right? Yeah. You're focusing heavily on, you know, an unsaturated, in my opinion, part. Everyone's all about how to get more money, how to get new clients. Whereas you're like, actually, if you improve your health, your revenue is going to go up anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. And that opportunity for especially seven-figure business owners is what they need to go from a seven to an eight to a nine to a ten. Because if they have more focus and clarity in the day, they won't have all of these, you know, anxiety feelings, all of these negative, your know, lack of sleep, as you know, better than anyone, is so important uh, to fix that. You're literally guaranteeing their business success, but not by focusing on, you know, business. It's focused on what they're doing outside of business, which I think is Absolutely. is so cool to see. Yeah, cheers, mate. Yeah, for sure. And it, it, it's, I think, probably the other side of the coin, isn't it? We're so heavily yeah. weighted on, on the one side that we've not really looked on the other side. Yeah, I love it, man. I think I think you can really scale this. I was talking to Matt about this recently, and I was like, there's something there where if all the ducks are aligned, I think you could 
you could make this into a million dollar business yeah. easily. And I, you know, there's not many people that come onto the program um, and get results like you have. Um, but when you, as you've done it, it's kind of been like, ah. And then when you, when you were talking about, you know, uh, I want to get 100k a month, and then you were like, had this idea on how you're going to do it. And I was like, maybe you should do it differently. There's like, there's so much potential there yeah. um, based on the responses you're getting, based on, you know, the prices you're charging and everyone paying in full. Like, there's so much that you can do. I'm so excited to help you get there as well. Yeah, um, okay, cool. So I do have a couple of questions. Yeah, I'm, yeah, like, I'm not that good at <laughs> thinking on top of my head. No, no, no. I love questions. Um, so, you know, how did the marketing strategies, all the campaigns we set up, you know, fix the problem? Obviously, you said automation was the biggest problem. I guess now, how much time are you spending on, you know, booking appointments versus what you were doing before? Yeah, uh, I think there's two parts to that. So, number one, uh, having a specific plan that you know has been used and replicated that is going to create an outcome. So, yeah. That's that's number one. You still got to have faith in it, uh, so people are still got to buy into it, and you know that's but, and that's the whole thing. You know, if they don't believe mm. it, then they're not then they're probably in the wrong place anyway. And no program is going to help them regardless. Uh, yeah. And number two, I like you know, you gave the framework and you actually allowed people to input their own identity into that sort of framework of outreach. So you said, mm. look, this is what we do. This is like templates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, input all these other sort of things, and it's just a, a blend of already done for you, putting your own stuff in there. Uh, and I guess that just helps to take a lot of the guesswork out mm. because I guess one could also argue that there's 10, 10 different ways that you could message someone and get the same outcome. But we spend so many times or so much time trying to figure out which one we want to choose. Whereas in what yeah. happened is you came and said, look, we've, this is the one we do, you know, have faith, let's blend it in. And then because we, you've chosen one, all your time's in taken away from having to source all these others. And I think that that helps a lot. Like it really, really, mm. really, really does. Uh, and with regards to freeing up time and that, it's like it's huge, uh, especially now that, you know, and even now my setter who's come in, uh, you know, I know they're only doing a couple of hours a day anyway, mm. uh, you know, two, three, maybe four, depending upon if they add it all up. Uh, yeah. And that can only happen because everything's been systematized and automated into one area. Uh, rather than just having to log on to individual profiles, having to, you know, because it's tough when you're not just doing it on your own, but as you know, you're going to LinkedIn and all those other sort of places and you're, mm -hmm. loads of messages that come through and you're trying to figure out, right, unread ones versus read ones and all yeah. those other sort of stuff. Uh, so for me, it's, it, yeah, it's been brilliant. It's been a game changer because it's allowing me to think more on the business rather than being lost in the business. Uh, that's literally what we focus on. It's funny because <clears throat> that's the whole idea, right? In our marketing, that's what I say. Like, are you tired of working in the business when you work on the business? And it's like, it's such a commonly used sentence that I think sometimes actually gets missed. And what I find difficult is actually making people see what we actually do, right? For example, when you first booked a call, what is, how much difference was your expectation versus the reality, which obviously you've now experienced? When I booked the call, do you mean, so my ex expectation so you before even you jumped to the call? Where, you know, like what I'm trying to, what I'm just very aware is it's a very competitive space. Yeah. Every person I speak to, you know, has, is speaking to five, ten different competitors of ours all at one time. So, you know, and you like you have you've joined other programs or anything like that. But when you saw our ad or you know you saw our marketing, were you just thinking, hey, is this another? You know, was this just another kind of person? Let's just see what I have to say. But I'm not expecting much. And then now that you've actually you know made the jump, you know, um, paid to be in our program, what has the reality been like versus the expectation that you first had when you saw our marketing? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so. I had seen your ad a couple, quite a few times before anyway. Uh, yeah. But at that present time, I was already sort of engulfed in some other programs. And so yeah. I do remember, I think I remember his Instagram was saying, you, you get to save adverts, you get to save these things. Uh, mm. And so I think what happened really was two things. Number one, I got to a point where I was just really starting to get fed up and tired. So you get to that, that point, like any decision gets created because you get to a point where you're like, okay, this no longer works for me. Yeah. So you get to that point, like you're like, okay, something has to change. And so, therefore, and so, uh, when it came to, when it came to you, I th for me, it was just more the simplicity and the offer that you were offering. Mm. Uh, and so, in my mind, and again, it's my own personal experience. This is what, however, everyone else may experience it. So, for my own mind, I was like, okay, perfect. I'm genuinely an, an, an eternal optimist, anyway. Uh, and so, I thought, okay, if you know, you had your offer. And I thought, right, okay, if I if you can deliver at least half of that, 
then I am in an infinitely better position than I am now. Yep. Uh, and so when I came onto the call, uh, that was my pre sort of ex experience. I was thinking, okay, look, let's, I'm happy to give you the sort of thing. If the call goes well, obviously, if I feel yep. like there's an alignment or there's a congruency there, you know, because uh, you, you know and I know, you've been on enough calls, you start to, you can see through all the stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so I was like, okay, if I feel there's a good congruency through there, uh, and bearing in mind that it's still me who needs to do the work, and so I'm happy to do that, if they can deliver half what they do, then I'm going to be very super, super happy than compared to I was anyway. Uh, and so yeah. I went in with that sort of expectation. Uh, and then once I signed on, then I was... The experience was, was much more because I, I I didn't understand how much you would be putting emphasis in terms of like all the stuff you sent for us to fill out and everything else like that. I love that. I thought the personalization was really good. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think because I love to personalize my programs, I, I found that, that that was brilliant. Uh, and so even though I had those expectations, uh, you definitely exceeded them in all avenues. Um, and you know, the way I look at it is even if we get to the end of the program where I am, and I've only, you know, you've fulfilled in whatever deal there was, et cetera, and, you know, half of those outcomes, I'm still infinitely one. I've still, you know, 3x what I paid for, 4x what I paid for for the program anyway. So I'm in a win-win situation. Yeah. But the other thing is I'll be in a position where I have a far more foundational stability, whereas then I can then scale. Mm -hmm. And so even if the delivery was half, then I know in the next 8 to 12 months, it's going to be exponentially different anyway. Yeah, if that makes sense. And so, uh, and, and so that was a sort of my mindset was I'm always open minded. Uh, I always knew I was and I guess I came into the program thinking, look, if anyone's going to fail this, it'll be me for not looking in, not doing the work and trying, etc, etc. But mm. yeah, your offer was so good. I just thought, you know, even if you and I figured you wouldn't be offering it if you can't deliver, obviously. Uh, but even if something happened, something really crap happened and stuff like that, and only do, yeah. and only half of that expectation happened, then I'm infinitely better. So it was, it was almost like a win-win. I, yeah, I so look at it as a lovely win. way. That's like the dream. That's like the dream sales school, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. It's, um, yeah, I think, you know, a lot of the times people forget that running a business is difficult, right? It's very, very hard. And some people, if not a lot of people, always want the easy route. Like, oh, I'll pay this person to get me this result and I don't do any of the work. That's not a reality for any, there's no business out there that that, that is a reality, right? Well, that's Even not a reality if, in life, is it? No, exactly. And I think that's probably, you know, that's part of the problem with marketing is that you do have to paint it a certain way where you get a lot of people coming onto the calls with a different expectation because they're kind of, you know, bought into the marketing. Um, and again, that's why you also, I also recommend everyone to have conditions in their agreement. Is that, hey, we can get you this result, but you have to do X, Y, Z to get exactly. that result. So it's not like, you know, no conditions. We're just saying this is going to happen, or if it doesn't, then you get a refund. It's, it's very much like this is going to happen if, if both of us do what we're saying we're going to do. And it's a partnership, right? I hate the word client. I'd much rather the word partner yeah, sure. because at the end of the day, we're helping each other. You know, you coming onto our program winning, you can then, you know, tell everyone else, for example, like it worked for me, and then I can help you or my team can help you grow your business and then you get that benefit of keeping the systems forever because obviously they're not we're not a legion agency you whatever we build for you is yours it's your ip right so after we've stopped working together the the system never leaves so like you said it, it will, it's a lifelong like um asset for you right yeah. so i do think a lot of people come on just expecting like i'm going to pay one dollar and i'm going to get three dollars back and if i don't i get my original dollar back right this is such a weird way in my experience where, like it just never works like that, yeah. right? And no matter who you pay or how much you pay them, there's no one that can be that involved in your day-to-day -day business to actually ensure that you don't do any of the work and that you are guaranteed results, no matter if you go on holiday for two weeks or whatever, whatever. Yeah. So I'm very grateful for you to be the other side of that and that you you understood that it requires work from your end um, and that, you know, you obviously have seen the results since. Um, now I guess it's a good time to ask. So in the 60 days we've been working together, how, you know, what does your revenue look like versus when you started versus now and, you know, if you can paint that picture, that'd be great. Yeah, for sure. So beforehand, uh, so probably the past two, three months beforehand, I probably only created a, uh, well, a handful of course. Uh, and so I, my revenue was very sporadic. So it's probably, actually, let's go back six, six months. I'd have times it would be about 10, 12K, and then times it would be like 3K. Uh, and then that was just up and down depending, uh, which is never yeah. good anyway, for not necessarily for business, but for mind and those sort of mm. things, et cetera, et cetera. Because uh, like for me personally as well, uh, I burnt my bridges at the beginning of the year 
when it came to clinic work. So I, uh, I stopped all clinic work uh, and basically it was just like, okay, because clinic for me was, I was earning a very good income and it was just easy money. Uh, and so I basically burnt the bridge, no more clinic work. Uh, and when it came to sort of doing my license and all that, still fully licensed, but I put myself down as for specific clinic stuff, you know, I won't be doing any clinical work. And so that stopped me mm. from being able to go, obviously I can reverse it, but, yeah. that, but that stopped me from basically doing that. And so uh, that was sort of part of what, what pushed me to start to seek, you know, other sort of ways. And then with regards to revenue, so I probably went from, like I said, between three, maybe 12, the best months I've ever had, uh, to now probably 15 to 20 now, uh, over the past, <laughs> You know, three months, uh, awesome. probably more, twenty-five on some months. So uh, you know, I've got five paid in full so far, uh, which is amazing. Uh, and so yeah, yeah, it's been brilliant, really, really good. Awesome, and, and, and again, just the calls oh, wait, have not the calls have not been as prevalent, I'm sure, as many. But as we've spoken yeah. about, the calls I have had have been world class. Mm. You know, the people have been really important, right? Very, very good. Yeah. I mean, one thing as well is like, uh, yeah. So it's not. It's never about how much per book call. It's never about you know, um, it's, sorry, what it is all about is cost to acquire a customer, right? So like like I said to you, you can spend a thousand dollars on a book call if you knew that that book call would turn to a client, then you pay it every day, all day, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, everyone gets stuck on like, how much is it gonna cost per lead? How much is it gonna cost per book call? You need to stretch it out. You need to work out what's your goal, what your profit margins you wanna be, and then re-engineering it, right? Then you can be like, okay, I've got this much to spend on up on marketing, this much to spend on sales team, this much to spend on fulfillment, and then this is my desired profit. And then you can, you know, you can work backwards from there. Um, and that's what everyone should be doing. Even if you're at zero, you need a plan. Without a plan, you won't know. Yeah, sure. So, sorry, I did skip over that because it triggered my, a thought in my brain. So, yeah, so, so the, the whole program, you started like 12K, free 12K, and then in the last 60 days, you've got five paid in fours. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And then how much, obviously, I know you've, some of it was 9.5 in full, some of it was, one well, of was 12. How much, how much in total do you know? Uh, it would be 60 plus. Wow, yeah. 60, so... So pretty good then. You've been going to have some nice dinners or not? Are you yeah, it's good. No, no, yeah. I've had a couple of nice different dinners. They, uh, a lot of it's gone back into, you know, uh, things, etc. anyway. Uh, yeah, of course. But uh, yeah, no, it's been brilliant. Like I said, it's been a, uh, it's taken a lot of stress off. Yeah. Like big time, a lot of stress. Uh, and it's just allowed me to sometimes have days where I've properly detached from work. Awesome. Uh, which is so important. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, and it's given me the confidence to do that too. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been brilliant. It's really, really good. And, and the confidence to know where you're going next, right? Absolutely. Yeah, without a shadow of doubt. That's the possibility of whatever your goal is going to be. Yeah, yeah no, for sure. I mean, but first, you know, first goal is consistent 50 grand, then 100 grand, then, you yeah. know, 200 grand, etc. So, so, yeah, absolutely. I mean, my, the goals are huge for me. Uh, awesome. And, yeah, this has been a huge, wonderful, eye opening experience of. You know, having this, you know, revenue come in. Um, you know, last question because we've been talking for a while about this. But um, would you re would you recommend our agency, I guess, for an agency, to other businesses seeking our services? And if so, what would you say to them? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't even hesitate to be honest. Uh, and what would I say to them? I would say, look, you can ponder, you can think, but if you, the, if you need to increase consistent revenue if you need to get consistent leads coming in that are quality if you want to set a foundation that you can scale with your business then there's nowhere else to look like zero there's just no point looking at anywhere else uh and the reason why is that everything's just there for you it's just a matter of just basically opening the door having the faith to go through and then just closing the door and you will never you won't regret it well, well i appreciate that more than you know uh, you. so what i'm going to do now is oh man i wasn't recording no. Oh my god. Oh no. Well, I swear I pressed the button. When you joined, did it not come up with the little thing? I don't know. Uh, oh, Luke, what have I done? <laughs> it's the most frustrating thing that's happened to me in a while. Oh, I can't just go through that again. That's, that's not fair. Uh, no, that's so annoying, man. Wait, let me just press that. Recording again. in progress. Not now. Yeah, now it's recording. Oh, mate. <laughs> oh, no. Mate, that hurts my soul. Mate, I, uh, I'm going to let it just hurt your soul a little bit more because it shits and giggles. Yeah, I, uh, sure. And then uh, I've actually recorded this on Loom. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Will that, will that mean they hear my voice or your, will they hear both voices? I think in Loom it might not record both voices, I have a feeling. Check it though. I think I've tried it. On, it might